All right, God bless everybody. Today we're going to talk about free will or free won't. Free will or free won't. Most of us insist we have the freedom to choose our way through life. Call it self-determination, self-rule, or free will. Other, others believe that there is no free will, that what has happened was predetermined and was meant to happen. And this school of thought is called determinism. Free will versus determinism has been a hotly debated topic since mankind had the time to consider more than one side of an argument when belief systems were integrated and governments began to rule. Some say that we have free will, others say we don't, while even others say we got a little bit of it, we got a little bit of, of it, but we got a little bit of not. You know, we, we sort of have it and we sort of don't have it. So do we have free will or do we not? That's the question I'm posing today. Free will is the ability to choose how to act, the ability to make choices that are not controlled by fate or God. That's from Merriam-Webster. Determinism is the doctrine or belief that everything, including every human act, is caused by something that there is no real free will. Ca it's caused by something and that there is no free will. That's from the Encarta Dictionary. So do we really make all our own choices, or is there a greater power, a power greater than ourselves that's responsible, responsible for at least some of what's happened? You know, do you believe in an all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent God? Do you believe in the exactness of mathematics? Do you believe in human biology or modern psychology? Do you believe in food? If so... Can any of these things affect your free will? Do you really believe in free will? Now, jumping between two opinions. The prophet Elijah challenged man's duality of thinking when he said in 1 Kings 18, 21, How long will you be divided between two ways of thinking? From the NLV. Or how long are you going to be paralyzed by indecision? The NET. Or how long will you waver between two opinions from the NIV? Or how long are you going to jump back and forth between two positions from the CJB? If we believe in free will, our soundness of thinking depends on our stability of thought. Do you believe in total free will or are things just meant to happen? And, and this is going to affect our believing, which will affect so many things in your life. Have you ever said, there must be a reason that thing happened to that guy? You ever said that? There must be a reason that thing happened. Or, she deserves what she's getting. After all, she's, um, look what she's wearing. She's responsible for her own actions. You ever heard that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ever said something like, like, my husband and I or my wife and I, you know, we were meant to be together. It's not a coincidence. You ever said something like that? Well, these all sort of blur the, the, the line between free will and predestination. And with those simple common statements, we're flirting between fate and free will, between predestination and choice, between determinationism and free will. Why is this important? Why is it important? Because your thoughts determine your actions. Your actions determine your habits. Your habits determine your believing, and your believing determines your destiny. Most Americans say they believe in free will. After all, we're the land of the free and the home of the brave. But do we really believe in free will? Now, determinism. As I said before, determinism is... The doctrine or belief that everything, including every human act, is caused by something and that there is no real free will. Now, none of us like to think that. I don't, I never thought I thought that. 
Um, but many great scientific minds and math geniuses believe that because the universe is so perfectly ordered and so accurate and so timely that those same flawless forces influence mankind. Um, a modern theoretical physicist named Mikhail Keiku stated, quote, uh, Newtonian determinism says that the universe is a clock, a gigantic clock that's wound up in the beginning of time and has been, and has been ticking ever since according to Newton's laws of motion. So when you're going to eat 10 years from now on January 1st has already been fixed. It's already known using Newton's law of motion. Einstein believed in that. Einstein was a determinist. You know, Keiku also said that Einstein believed that free will was just an illusion and that awareness of this lack kept, kept him from taking himself and others too seriously. But Einstein was plain wrong, according to Keiku. Now, many geniuses believe that life is predetermined because they completely believe in the math or science of the universe. Pythagoras said, numbers rule the universe. Um, quote, the understanding of mathematics is necessary for a sound grasp of ethics. Socrates. Um, here's another one. Nature's great book is written in mathematics. Galileo. Some of the greatest minds believe that, that everything was uh, an, an orderly design. And it was already predetermined. Um, in Christian theology, predetermination is, is defined as the act of God by which he foreordained every event throughout eternity. Everything from the path of migrating birds to tropical storms to a leaf falling. Even to the distance between waves was foreordained by God when he created the universe. They believe it was already all mapped out. You know, Colossians 1.17 says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Or God holds the universe together and has a plan for everything and everyone. That verse sort of says that. Now, now great Christian thinkers like St. Augustine and Calvin and Luther believed in, in predestination with a sprinkle of free will thrown in there. And here's why they believe this. Verses like 2 Timothy 1.9, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, who was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God called us, not according to our works, before the world began. Okay, He called you, knowing exactly what you were going to do, who exactly the mistakes that you made and he still wanted you before the world began. Ephesians 1.4 According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God chose you before the foundation of the world, or as some translate, before the overthrow of the cosmos. We were chosen and we were considered blameless. You're considered blameless. And this is where some religions go a little askew. You know, we're blameless because Jesus Christ took the blame and paid the ultimate price. And that's not the reason they go askew. The reason they think that they're blameless because it just was meant to be. But we'll get to that in just a few minutes. It was preordained. You have no control, really, over the, the main impetus of your life. Now, the religion of Islam believes, that, believes fully in predestination or determinationism or determinism. And that, cho that the choices they make are predestined and predetermined by God. The English word for predestination is what Muslims call Al-Qaeda. And or, quote, the divine decree and the predestination, end of quote. In Islam, God has predetermined, pre-known, preordained, and is constantly recreating every event that takes place in the world. God is in control of everything to them. 
And consequently, people are already predestined to either heaven or hell at birth or from birth. And, and if they get in a wreck, it's God's will. If somebody else dies, it's God's will, you know, because it, they don't have to take responsibility for that. If they, if they do some dastard, dastardly deed, it's all his will. It was meant to happen from the beginning. If they become a great doctor, it too is the will of God. You see, this belief removes re, re, human responsibility such as free will. It seems that great scientific minds, certain Christian sects, and the Sunni Muslims all believe in some level of predestination or determinism. I I ask you once again, do we have free will or do we not? So, um, not so free will. Now, I'm going to touch on a few things that's going to make you think. Microbiology. There's a woman in the UK that had a serious life-threatening bacterial infection that caused inflammation in her colon. And the doctors had tried everything, but nothing seemed to work on this lady. They did, and this woman was healthy. She was, had an athletic build and all this. And they decided to transplant some healthy gut bacteria from a healthy person because, of, because the antibiotics they'd been using had killed off much of her good microbiota, uh, her microflora. Now the donor, the don- it's best if the donor is somebody related to you because of genetics. And the donor was her daughter. And uh, so after the procedure, the patient was cured of her gastric problems, but quickly gained 30 pounds. Just boom! And she had never been overweight in her entire life. But after the transplant, she she tried, but she was never able to keep the weight off again. And to this day, still isn't. And the, the, the patient actually said, quote, from the moment I had the fecal transplant, I felt like a switch flipped in my body, said Dr. Colleen Kelly, a gastroenterologist at the Warren Alpert School of Brown University. Quote, she felt like prior to the fecal transplant, she had never had to worry about weight, end of quote. Now, the doctors were perplexed about the weight, and, so, and then they started realizing there's some connection between that transplant and the weight. And they realized that the bio sample they took from her daughter and gave to her must have been what caused her to gain weight. And the daughter had a tendency toward being overweight, so the bacteria in her gut now match the bacteria in her daughter's gut. Now they're both exactly 30 pounds overweight. Nowadays, when doctors perform this type of bacterial transplant or fecal transplant, they won't take it from an overweight donor. Why? 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 The new bacteria caused her to match her daughter's weight. The introduction of of healthy but bad bacteria signaled to her brain to eat the things that her daughter liked and and things that she never would have done before. Why? You know, is, is that free will? You know, studies have shown that bad bacteria caused by eating poorly causes people to eat poorly, and good bacteria causes them to eat good foods. Now, doctors know that antibiotics kill our gut, our, our gut bacteria, good and bad, and it takes eating certain, certain uh, foods in order to regrow, regrow that healthy bacteria. It's like a forest inside of you like the forest fires that are going on on the West Coast now. In just moments, it can take out a a city block of forest and ruin it. It takes years to come back. Well, it takes a long time for your gut bacteria to, to grow back right, especially if it's been wrong. And that wrong stuff tells your brain, the bad bacteria, to eat things that are bad because that's what it needs to live. Now, one thing I want you to know, bacteria has been around a lot longer than humans have been. 
And, and so this, sort of makes, this makes me think, who's really in control sometimes? You've heard of kids that eat the wrong thing, and, they, and then they, they whack out, right? You see, even co- certain colors of foods they can't eat because it causes them to do things. It's because of that gut bacteria. It sends signals to the brain to do different things. Isn't that weird? But it's, it's true. All medical science knows this stuff. Yet why in the weight loss category do people not understand this thing? It takes time to rebuild the good, the good floor in our intestines so that it'll start making you want to eat what's good, what it needs. But the other stuff's powerful too. But it can be changed. See, doctors know that antibiotics kill this. And see, we've been eating antibiotics in our meats you know, anything that's not organic for years. And the, the American obese problem started basically in the 50s when we started giving our kids a lot more antibiotics. And it killed off the good flora that had been handed down from generation to generation to generation from the birth, going through the birth canal. You know, it just kills it off. And, uh, and then, then kids, keep, you keep starting over. And that's, why we, that's part of the reason we have this big obesity thing. If people didn't, if they had the right gut floor inside of them, they wouldn't crave some of the junk. So is it really your fault? Is it really your fault? Is it the meat producer's fault? Is it the fast food people's fault? Is it the sugary drink people's fault? You know, is it free will? Is it that gut bacteria? Well, I guarantee it's telling your brain what, what it wants to eat. When you have a, you ever heard, listen to your body? I'm saying don't listen to your body all the time. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. Remember, it's free will or free won't. The obesity academic, uh, epidemic is, is real. Did you know that one, oh, one packet of Splenda kills half of the gut bacteria that you have, one packet. It's some of the worst things you could do. Any, 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 the only sweetener that's any good that, that won't kill it is, is uh, sweet leaf or stevia. You know, but I mean, it, it's, it's crazy, but every one of the man-made ones will kill the bacteria in somebody. And then your, your body's always trying to catch up. That's why we're so, we look so different today than you see the movies from the 30s and 40s and 50s. You see? It's changed the shape of the world. Antibiotics are good. It saves a lot of lives. But then you gotta, you got to take into consideration what it's doing to the inside of you, too. Or the mom's putting that slather in their kids with that antibacterial stuff all the time. I'm telling you. So enough on that. I'm not in here to give a diet thing. But the, the thing is, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's about, it, it's, 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 is it free will? Is it really free will? You're craving for that burger or pizza or chips or salty snack or sweets. or What's causing that? You know, uh, some groups talk about first thought, first thought, first thought. You better reconsider that first thought, you know, because if, if, it, if it's bacterial, it may not be the right thought. Free will or free won't. It may be possible to attract and encourage the growth of good bacteria in our guts. And it could help people who, who are having trouble getting overweight to do a little more study on this. I'm not going to go any deeper into it. Maybe you can finally get a hold of your weight loss. You know, in actuality, all gut bacteria, it needs certain foods to survive. So it ask your brain for it. Remember, bacteria's been around a lot longer, and it manipulates it, what it wants. I'm hungry. Feed me. <laughs> I want a burger. Or I want an apple. You know, depending on what you got in there. Is it free will? Now I'm going to talk about a sleepwalking man. Won't go too much into detail, but there's a true story of a sleepwalking man who in his sleep murdered his wife. He had no idea it happened until he awoke the next day. And he called the emergency number and cried out for help, but, but the emergency people were too late. He went to court for murder. 
And the judge and the jury let him off scot-free because he was asleep when he committed the atrocity. Is it, was it free will? Was that murder free will? You could say, oh, it's spiritual, it's this and that. Well, you know, who the heck knows why? He said probably he thought he was being attacked in his sleep. You see, people come back with all kinds of problems from war, you know, and then things happen. So is it free will? What's driving that behavior? Is it really free will? There's many forces that are out of our control, and there's many that are well within our control. So let's control what we can control. After all, don't we have free will? And if you don't think you have free will, you do have free won't. So now, free won't. Free won't. I talked about free will, but now let's talk about free won't. Free won't is probably the most controllable of the two between it and free will. Because sometimes you think you really want something, you think you really need something, and you don't. You see, but we can always decide what we won't do. I won't reach for that donut. You see, I won't. I want a pizza, but I'm not going to go to the store and get one. Or, or dial the, the number and get one. You know, so what you can decide not to. You go to a, a, a holiday party, and there's all kinds of goodies out there. In fact, it's all junk. Sugary, salty, junky stuff, but it's good. It tastes good. I want it. But will I or won't I eat it? So you get the point. You ever heard someone say, I'm just a man. I couldn't help it. <laughs> or with the clothes she wears, she brought it on herself. Or those donuts are calling my name. <laughs> or every male in my family dies before they're 55. You've heard me tell that story before. But a guy who told, told my wife and I that everybody in his family died before they turned 55. He lived in, he lived in our house as, as a roommate. And uh, he moved out. And then I heard that he had passed. He was, he was 54 when he moved out. And, uh, and I heard that he had passed away when he was 54. You know, he had listened to the words of his, his, his aunts and his, his, his mom and his sisters their, his whole life that everybody dies before they're 55. Now, I figure if you can choose the year of your death, you can choose the year of your change. You can choose, if you can choose the year of your death, you can choose the year that you prosper. It can't be any different, but, it, it, but you got to run it through your head so much. Is it free will that he died at 55? Or have you ever heard somebody say, God, I always screw things up. Or you ever, tell your, you ever tell yourself that kind of thing? Man, I'm a mess up. You might use a different, different word in there. You see? Um, how about, you know, he got, me, he got me so angry I just lost it. You know? Or I was guilted into giving. You didn't want to give when that person was ringing the bell, but you felt guilty because everybody else was. You know, is that free will? You see? Uh... You ever heard somebody say, sorry, it just popped out of my mouth? <laughs> or how about this one? I've heard this one before. Hey, I'm Italian. Forget about it. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is where free won't needs to kick into gear. You know, have you ever driven to work and had no remembrance of driving there? I have. You ever driven to work or, or, or driven home from work and then you went to your old house that you just moved from? Yes. You know, it's like, it's like why, do, why do you do it? Why does that happen? It's, just, it's because your, your mind relied on habit as opposed to cognitive thinking. Is that free will then? Because that cognitive thinking, that habit that's in your, in your, your, your basal ganglia, you know, within the innermost part of your mind... It, it, if, your, if your whole frontal lobe was cut out, you could still do everything that's habitual to you. It's just habits. It's so deeply embedded in there that it can't ever leave. It's habitual. You see? 
Our life is as much automatic habit as it is thought. Is it free will? You see, you know, there are tens of thousands of corrections and calculations you perform each time you get behind the wheel. If you had to think about each and every movement that you do, every glance out the mirror, you would never drive again. You'd be stressed out. You don't even think about it. You hop in there and everything's just automatic. It's a habit. You see, you were raised to think and to talk a certain way, like my friend who died at 55. You see, some of this is habitual. It's habitual thoughts. It's habitual behavior. It's little actions, facial expressions. You ever see, how, you see some families, how they sort of move like each other? You know, they, I mean, it's, it's sort of funny to watch that. Or, or different countries. A lot of times people can say, I can tell you're an American. Why? Because of how you, how you move, you see? Or I can tell that person's not an American by how they move or how they smoke a cigarette or how they do different things, you see? So uh, some of this is habitual. It may not be, the, be your fault for the way that you think. But with free won't, you can, you can change just about anything by knowing what you're willing to allow, what thoughts you're going to allow to dominate in your life. I mean, we're all raised certain ways. We're raised in certain countries. Things are just habitual. They're just built into us. Is it free will? This, this is a question that people have, have struggled with, the smartest minds in, in the universe or in the world. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6 from the message. The world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for the marketing or manipulation, but they're for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies tearing down barriers elected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building uh, lives of obedience into maturity. See, we build that. We, we don't have to, we don't have to, we can smash through and, and think above these warped philosophies and even habits that we've had. Sometimes it's good to think about what you're thinking about. Sometimes it's good to think, why do I, do I really want that bag of chips at three o'clock in the, in the afternoon? Why? Am I really hungry? Or is it? Do I just need to go to the break room and talk to somebody? So maybe try just going to the break room and talking to somebody. Then you don't need a chip. Or give somebody a call or go for a walk. Maybe you just need to get up. That's what you really need, just to do a little walk. Walk to the cafeteria in your office. Whatever it is. Why do you want that every day at the same time? Well, it's a habit. Why is it a habit? It's worth thinking it through. Why do I need that drink? The second I get home from work. See, why do I need to eat, eat that cheeseburger every day for lunch? You know, whatever. You know, you get the point. You fill in any blank. You see, um, so we decide what we allow and what we won't allow. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24 from the message. But that's no lie for you. You learn Christ. My assumption is that you've, been, that you've paid careful attention to him been well instructed in truth, precisely as, as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it and take on the entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into, into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you or as Christ is formed in you. So we put off the old man and we put on the new. People do that in January, don't they? 
They put off the old and they put on the new. They make new goals. They set new things. But then they don't even last a month. Why? Because there's no habit. Why is there no habit? Well, could it be free will? Could it be the way you were raised? Could it be what you eat? Yes, yes, and yes. How do we put off the old man? How do we put on the new? You know, some people blame God for their problems. And you think, oh, I've never done that. Well, you ever been mad at God because you didn't get something? Come on. Maybe you didn't say it out loud, but it's like, ah, why did they get it and I didn't? Well, the same thing. It's blaming God. How come my kid had that sickness and, and they didn't? It's a horrible thing if your kid's sick. You know, but, but is it God's fault? You know, some people blame other people. Well, I'm like this because of the culture I was raised in or the streets that I was raised on, you know, or the lousy education I had or the too much education I had. You see, some people blame religion. Well, my church, you know, they ruined my life. You know, they took away the best years of my life. Some blame diet, as we've talked about ad nausea. You see, some blame sleep. You know, just not getting enough sleep. I feel like I'm sleepwalking through life. <laughs> that means a whole different thing now. <laughs> you know? While others take responsibility for their own lives, for everything. It's really an easier way to live. Take responsibility. You know, something happens. I mean, even if it's something that you didn't cause. Heard somebody say recently, they said, if I got an accident, I would still take responsibility for that accident. And somebody said, well, why would you do that? Well, I should have left a few minutes earlier. Or I should have left a few minutes later. Or maybe I should have just, you know, gone, you know, worked from home or gone a different way. I mean, still, there's always something. We all, all Christians say, well, God works in them to will and to do of his good pleasure, right? Well, maybe we need a little bit of that good pleasure. You see? So keep us out of these stupid accidents. See, you get the point. We have the, you know, we have the free will to use our free won't. We have the free will to use our free won't. Free won't is powerful, folks. There, there's been studies done by psychologists for the last 40 years with, since brain imaging scans have, have come into play and, and uh, these electromagnetic things. And, and, uh, and they realize that they, they, when they do these, these tests on people, that a lot of times the scientists can tell um, almost a half a second before you make a decision which one you're going to make. And they can tell that by, by imaging. So, and so they wonder, is it free will or is it pre-programmed? They can tell what button you're going to push, which card you're going to take. You see, you know, by, by these, it's, it's, it's spooky, you know, but, the, but the, the point is, is, is it free will or is it not? And I'm saying in many ways it doesn't matter because you have free won't. You have free won't. People can choose not to press the red button. They can choose not to take a donut. They can choose not to drive on that street because they're just feeling like they shouldn't. They can choose a lot of things. See, do we have free will or don't we? Like I said before, we have free, or the free will to use our free won't. So in summary, most of us insist we have freedom to choose our way through life. That we have free will. Others believe that there is no free will. They believe that everything is predetermined and, just meant, and it's just going to happen. Some people believe that we live in a world that's, that's a little bit of both. A little bit of free will, a little bit of predestination. And if you listen to the way you talk, you talk both ways. Trust me. You talk both ways. You know, so the greatest minds of the world disagree on free will versus determinism. And religions give a pass to people, some religions give a pass to people doing wrong because it was just meant to be. 
It was preordained. It's going to happen. You see, it's, it's, it's just the way it is. People give up on themselves and on others because they believe that's just how they are. Yet many scientists have done tests on school kids, and if they tell the teacher this kid is special and he's, he's super intelligent, so treat him as such, and he's really not. And if that new teacher believes this kid is super intelligent, that kid will usually show signs of, of great intelligence. Why? So is that free will for that kid? That's an outside source that's, that's making that kid think it can do more than, it, than everybody else told it, right? Is it free will? I don't care. I don't care anymore. You see, people give up on themselves and others because of that. They think it's just their nature. Are we in control or are we co controlled by some unseen force? Well, sometimes you're controlled by some unseen force. Hence, gut bacteria. You see. Or you think God kept something from happening to you. You ever said that? Oh boy, God saved me this time. Woo! Well, is that free will then? You know, that's what I'm saying. This is, this is a slippery slope, folks. But in one way, it doesn't really matter. Do I really have to eat what my body wants me to eat, or can I decide to eat better? I'm saying you can decide to eat better. And if you keep eating better for long enough, it'll change the, the biology of your, your intestines, and then you'll start wanting to eat better. But it takes time, just like it takes time to rebuild, a, to regrow a forest. You see, God's still the one that holds the universe together. Yes, I, be I do believe that fully. But maybe the question shouldn't be, do we have free will? But maybe it should be, are we willing to use our free won't? So, free will or free won't. And I'm saying, use your free won't, and you will see a great increase in your life, lifestyle. God bless.